Hi guys, it's me again, BeamerZen, with another video. So today I will be doing a multifunction steering wheel conversion. I've went to eBay and I've bought this uh, trim with buttons and I'm going to retrofit the multifunction on this E46 BMW. As you can see, I have a Trix 16 Ti compact BMW. This is a special model only sold in Europe and some other countries. So you don't have this car in America, but the procedure should be the same for all E46 models. I think that all the pins and connectors are basically the same. Uh, there are some differences in the model of the steering wheel you have installed, but I think it basically works for all of the steering wheels available for this model. This particular car has N42 engine inside, which means it's 1.8 liter engine. It has its own uh, computer, but I think it will work on all other models. On this table, I have everything you will need to do this conversion. The most important bit is of course this new trim with the buttons. As you can see, the new top trim has uh, volume buttons here and it has uh, change station or change the tune. It has uh, voice activation for the phone and here you can set your cruise control functions and you can speed up or speed down velocity of your car. You will also need this packet of wires. This is a special MFL adapter kit that comes from eBay. As you can see I have three wires that are color-coded and each of the wire has a pin attached so this just slots into the connector and this particular kit comes with this uh, clamp-on uh, connectors so you don't have to cut any of the wires you just uh, attach this crimp connector in and it should work. There is also some instructions here, but to be honest, they aren't very good because all that you have is pin number and the color of the wire. So you have to do some digging uh, to see in which connector you have to plug it in. But don't worry guys, I will do that for you. So you will just watch this video and know how to do it. Then, as you can see, I have some more tools. I have some uh, zip ties here and I have a T20 torque screwdriver. You will need that to remove all the screws on the steering wheel. And of course you will need a couple of uh, attachments. This is I think 5mm Allen key. Then you have your normal Phillips screwdriver and of course the trusty 10mm socket which you always lose or don't have and I would suggest you buy or get trim removal tools because we have to remove a piece of trim and if you don't have these tools you can scratch the plastics and you know that looks ugly and you know these tools are really cheap you can buy them on eBay and then you don't have to worry about it so the first thing we have to do is unplug the battery because we will be removing the airbag unit and we don't want to activate the airbag by accident. So it's always a good idea if you're doing something electrical to disconnect the battery. Now in this car with N42 engines and this year model, uh, the battery is here on the passenger side. And as you can see, I've already disconnected the negative terminal and if you want to be extra careful you can also disconnect the positive side but i will not do that today so when you have the battery unplugged you can start removing the airbag okay i'm now inside of the car this is my steering wheel as you can see this part here this trim panel can be removed and this is where the new trim panel comes with the buttons. Uh, now as you can see you have three spoked steering wheel and you also have a four spoked steering wheel which comes in older models. 
Uh, you can do the same conversion on uh, that steering wheel too, but you will have to get the whole new steering wheel with multifunction uh, buttons or you will have to get new airbag that uh, fits the multifunction plates. So if you don't want to go through all that trouble, you can just buy a new complete steering wheel with multifunction and replace the steering wheel and the rest of the procedure is basically the same. So first we will want to remove the airbag unit. This is quite tricky and the way to do it is you have to have a small screwdriver. Could be flat screwdriver but it has to have a flat surface and then you go on the side of the steering wheel and you will see there is a hole here from where you can access a special spring bar that holds the airbag unit and you have to go through uh, through the hole like this on this angle so it's about 20 to 15 degrees and you have to align the screwdriver a bit towards the front and you will feel a flat surface and on the end of the flat surface there will be resistance and when you come to the resistance you just have to push and you will feel there's a, a quite strong spring there that you have to press in okay i've managed to release one side of the airbag as you can see you have to kind of wiggle the airbag a little bit until it disconnects here on the inner side and then you have to do the same on the other side so there's also a hole which you have to go through and again fill the spring and wiggle the airbag out okay i finally managed to get the airbag out and you just pull it out and then you have to disconnect two wires so the way you do that you just pry out the connectors with a small flat screwdriver okay so now you can take out the connector and you do the same here okay now you can remove the airbag unit and now i can show you where you have to press to release the airbag you can see there are a couple of uh, wire springs here and here and what you have to do is use your screwdriver and push in one side of the spring i hope you can see why this is so tricky to do so this is what you have to do and the same on this side so you go through the hole and then you have to go past this part here and continue until you fill the spring and then you can press it in and that will release the airbag so quite tricky it took me quite a while to get it out but 
I hope that this video will make it easier for you. Now we want to remove this front trimming and you do that by undoing a couple of screws. One screw is here and the other one is here. And then there are also a couple of screws here from the back side. They're all T20. Okay, the first screw is out. The second screw is out. And then we have a couple of screws from the back. Now you can remove the front trim. And here you can see there are four T20 screws holding the upper and lower plate together. So you remove them and you separate the parts. Another important point is you have to have a normal torque screwdriver because you have to go through this cutout here to get to the bolt and you if you have a thick screwdriver you will not able to get through the hole so make sure you get a thin one and then you can undo the screw okay we have the trim parts separated so this is the old trim you will no longer need and here is the new trim with the buttons. Here you can see the part number from BMW. And there are some more part numbers here. I will put, of course, part numbers in the description so you can find them without any issues. When you buy the multifunction trim, don't forget to get it with this cable, otherwise, of course, your buttons will not work. I've got the new trim part connected with the bottom part, and now we can reinstall the whole trim. Don't forget to connect the cable. The cable must be connected to this connector here. Make sure you do some cable management. I will put the cable through this harness here and that should prevent from any uh, damage to the cable. Now we can put back the two torque screws. And the screw on the left side. And then don't forget to tighten up the screws here at the bottom of the steering wheel. And check all the cables. I think that my cable management should be okay. So the white connector is here. And now we can put back the airbag unit.
the connectors only go in one way. So plug back the connector and press on the security latch. And now we put back the green connector and press down. Okay. And now we can put back the airbag. Now all you have to do is press in the airbag firmly until you hear it click. That's the latch on the right side and that was the latch on the left side. And congratulations, you have now steering wheel with multifunction buttons. Now I do have to stress that you should be careful putting in and out the airbag you might scratch your trim i did uh, create a small scratch here but luckily it's not too visible but just a reminder be careful don't scratch anything now we have to remove a couple of uh, bottom trims we have to remove this trim on the steering column and we also have to remove this trim here underneath the steering column and we have to do that so we can route new wires that connect the the steering wheel with the switching unit and the front of the ECU box. To remove this trim here you first have to use a flat piece of um, wire or some kind of a flat screwdriver because you have to press in two pins so the first pin is here and the second pin is over here and i'm going to do that and i'm going to show you how it works later so you just press in you will gonna hear a pop and now you can start prying out the trim now this piece of trim has two uh, latches on each side first latch is here on the front and the second one is here at the back approximately where my finger is so if you pry this part here you should hear it pop okay so you see this this part here popped and now we have to go here and it popped here you can see the second latch over here and we have to do the same thing on the other side so we first pry here the top be careful you don't scratch or break anything and the bottom trim is out this is how it looks like so you can see it has pins and latches you can see a latch here and a latch here and then here on the bottom you can see the pins there are a couple of them 
and to release the pin what you have to do is press in this inner part and this will release the teeth that hold the trim together. Now we have to remove the bottom trim here. So I'm going to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove three screws here. Okay, and then I will have to use side cutting pliers to remove this pin here. You have to pull the pin out, make sure you don't accidentally cut the pin. And now you can remove the rest of the pin and also you have to remove this pin here let there be light so you have to turn this pin 90 degrees and then you can pull it out as you can see this pin has teeth that engage with the plastic uh, holder on the inside. Now you can remove the trim by snapping it out of the these brackets here. There's another bracket here. And then you can slowly remove the whole panel. Okay. Out it goes. As you can see, it's quite dusty. And now we have to remove the OBD connector. You can do that by sliding this bracket out and then pulling out the connector here it is the connector is out and we can remove this trim panel all together now we have to remove this trim here because we have to remove the switch unit and I already removed this trim and it has a couple of latches here and here so when you are prying it out you should go about one centimeter from the edge like this and just pry it out You should be able to just pull it out straight and it's out. As you can see it has two pins and unfortunately I've already broken off one of the metal or rather plastic brackets that hold the trim. So here you can hopefully see where the plastic trim broke and now I don't know what I'm going to do but you know it sucks if you don't know what you're doing exactly so when you are prying this piece of trim out now you know you have to go all the way here and pry it out the concept is really simple 
it's basically just friction on these metal brackets holding the trim piece in and yeah well if you didn't know now you know now you can remove the switch unit there should be two two screws here that are missing on my car which is very interesting uh, I don't know who removed the trim before and what he did but all I know is that screws are missing and also here there's a screw missing so what the hell right <laughs> now you can pull out the switch unit And as you can see, there's also a connector here. So pull out the unit and remove this connector here. Uh, the connector has a pin or rather a tab at the top that you have to press down to release this latch. So press down and release the latch and that should release the connector. So this is the switching unit. Uh, it's quite smart and that's why we have to connect a couple of wires here. Okay, now we have to remove a piece of this uh, harness so we gain some space here. Okay, now it's time to use this uh, wire kit and you will see that it comes with pin assignments and color codes. So, Grungelb, that means green and yellow. Blauweiss, that means uh, blue and white. And Blaugrun, that means blue and gray. So. This should give us some information on how to connect the wires. This kit comes with a clamp on connectors. So if you don't like the connectors, you can just cut the wire and solder on the wires directly. I will use these connectors because I think they should work just fine. So the first wire is yellow and green. This is the longest wire and this one goes to the front ECU box and as you can see it has connectors on both sides. So first you have to remove the bottom connector on the steering column This is the connector here. Then you have to use a very small flat screwdriver to open up the connector. So you have to open up the part that is missing the three wires. So this is the side we will have to open up. And you do that by releasing this clip here very slowly and gently and now we can insert the wires you should see there are pin numbers here on the connector so this one on the far left is number 10 and this on the far right is number 6 and here on the instructions you can see that we have to use pin 10 9 and 8 so first we go with pin 8 and that is Grungil that means green and yellow this is our long wire and make sure that you insert it so that special latch is on the top side 
so this part here must be on top and then you insert it into pinhole number 8 until you hear it click and it should not go out anymore then we have pin 9 that's blue and white and of course then we have blue and green okay we have all the wires in now we close the connector and then we plug the connector back in okay now we have our our wires here and we have to route the wires through here underneath the steering column and through this hole here I'm going to use a couple of zip ties to cable manage the whole situation but I'm going to do that later and now what we have to do is remove the blue connector and we do that by pressing on this tab here and now we slide out the connector So this is the part of the wiring that we need to connect and we go and check the wiring diagram again and we can see that we have to connect pin 27 and pin 21 with the special clamps and those two pins are located on this connector here so first we have to find the pin 27 and all of the connectors are labeled so we should see uh, the appropriate pin numbers so this is the number one and this is number 14 so if we go around we should see so this is 27 this is our wire here and the other wire we need is 21 and the 21 is this one here so these are the two wires that we need to connect uh, this one is violet and yellow and red and white with yellow marks so I'm going to prepare those two wires uh, as you can see uh, my wires are already a bit messed up that's because I've already used the clamps when I was doing my preparation for the video making sure I know everything and that it works so I'm going to just put the clamps back on the original position so First we will connect pin 21, so 21 is blue and white, this is the wire here, as you can see how these connectors work is you insert one piece of the wire here
so you insert it here and when you press down it breaks the insulation and creates contact and I'm going to put that on the same spot here Okay, I have both of the wires in. Now I have to clamp two pieces together and that will break the insulation and create contact. So you clamp down and then you close the clamp and this should have a good electrical connection. And of course we do the same for the other wire, which is this one, blue and yellow, actually blue and green. And we're going to connect it to the pin 27. Okay, I have all the wires in place. And now I can Just press down on this metal part. Now we close the clamp and we have our connections. Okay. Now we put back the connector Make sure it clicks And I'm going to put back the light switch unit And I'm going to connect it because I first want to test if our multifunction buttons are working. Okay, so we connect these two wires here, but the yellow and green wire we have to connect inside the ECU box and I'm going to show you how to route it. And now we go to the front of the car and we have to pet the dog. Pet the dog, yes, good dog. Yes, 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 very, very good dog. And we have to remove this top cover for the ECU. Uh, you have to use a 5mm Allen key to remove a couple of uh, bolts. When you are undoing the bolts, 
uh, don't screw them all the way out because you will lose them so when you see the thread stop that should be enough as you're about to see I've already lost the bolt so I am missing a bolt here because it fell somewhere there into the abyss and of course I wasn't able to find it uh, so yeah that's a very good tip for you guys don't screw the bolts all the way out because it's not necessary now remove the cover and here you can see a couple of uh, you have a couple of fuses and connectors and relays and the connector we will have to unplug is the first one here on the ECU so this connector just basically uh, pulls out you have to press you have to press well I'll show you when I take it out so you have to press this tab here and that will release the connector and then we have another connector here that has a button on the top and you have to press the button and then undo the latch and the connector pops out so this is the connector we will be working on and this is where we will have to plug in a new wire okay we're now underneath the dashboard and you can see there's a large wire loom going to the ECU box the ECU box is the white part over there and it has a couple of vent holes so you have a hole here and here and we're going to route our yellow and green wire through the bottom and we're going to put there a couple of uh, centimeters of wire so we can pick it up with our long pliers there okay that should be enough we are here at the front of the car with our ECU box and now we're going to take our long pliers and look for the wire which should be somewhere there Oh yeah, there she is. So that's our wire we have to grab with our long pliers and pull out. Still not quite there yet. I'm going to remove this part here so I will have a bit more access. Okay, I think I have it there it is okay we have our wire here and we have to connect this wire to pin 27 as per the instructions received with the kit it's a shame we only get uh, these instructions here it doesn't say which connector it is so we have to remove the black connector And now we can look for the number. So this is 40 and 31. So this is 30. So this one here should be the right pin, 27. So this is where we have to insert our wire here it is okay we have our connector back together and we're going to put it back in the ECU make sure you hear a click sound that means that connector is secured okay this is our wire 
we're going to tidy up that wire later when we test the new functions. Okay, we have everything wired up and put together. Now it's a good time to make a test if everything works. So first I have to connect the battery. Okay, let's insert the key and see if it worked. Okay, so I have the airbag light, but that's, uh, that's what happens if you turn on your ignition when your airbag is not uh, properly connected. Now, uh, this is an issue I have from before, so I just have to reset the airbag light and it should be okay. But if you have not turned on the ignition while the airbag was disconnected, you should not have that light over there. So nothing to worry about. Let's see if we have our radio. So I'm going to turn on the radio. Oh no, I could be copyright striked or something. So I have to change the volume. Oh yeah, it works! Okay, I should probably change the station to a student radio. They should not give us any problems with copyrights, I guess. And let's try the volume. Yeah, volume button works, so that's great. And let's try the cruise control. So if we press this button here, we should see a green light oh yeah here it is a green light for the cruise control and I guess I can change the speed here on the steering wheel now so I'm going to turn it off oh yeah well I guess this is it it worked guys let's try to change stations yep it works. So this was a successful retrofit, so successful upgrade. I'm uh, quite happy with it and now it uh, really looks luxurious with all uh, them buttons, right? That's why we're doing this. And okay, now that we have the system tested, all we have to do is use some electrical tape to secure all the wires and I'm going to use some zip ties to uh, secure all the wires. Okay guys, this is the end of this video. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of the trim panels reinstallment and putting everything back together. It's basically just the reverse process of uh, this assembly. So uh, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos like this and uh, as always keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.